Hi, I'm a publisher, but I'm also a mother of a very adorable two-year-old boy. And one of the things that makes me very happy is that my little boy Shoki just loves reading books. He's also always got his nose buried in a book. Um, and I get asked all the time, how did that happen? What did I do to get Shoki into books so early? One is that, remember, until they're two or three, they're seeing pictures more than they're reading words. At least I found with Shoki that he's less interested in the story, he's more interested in objects. So there's a classic American book called Goodnight Moon, and it does this very well because the story is almost told through pointing at objects. What he's really doing is he's learning words with images. And so what he likes to do is he likes to sit on the sofa next to me or he likes to sit on my lap. And then we open out a book and I don't read out the words in the book verbatim. I make up the story myself just using the pictures. So he loves this Japanese book called My Neighbor Totoro, which is based on the classic Japanese kids film called My Neighbor Totoro. And, um, you know, we might, the narrative might be as simple on a page like, oh, Satsuki and May screamed. Shoki Pops, how did they scream? And then, you know, we both scream, right? And all the other complications on the page, all the other nuances, I don't even bother with. By the way, this reading experience is not more than five to seven minutes. Very short attention spans. Don't expect it to be longer. Words. So one of the big mistakes I think I often see people make is they actually read out the text. And it's quite hard, you know, for a kid to follow. Another thing I do, by the way, with I've done with a five-year-old that's really worked, is when they're looking at objects, I sometimes Google image that, that very object on the phone. So if there's a fo uh, an illustration of a mummy, I'll say, you want to see what a mummy is or a pyramid is? And I'll just uh, Google it on my phone and they see a photograph. And you know, even for a kid, they do see a difference between the photograph and an, and an illustration. And they're kind of fascinated because suddenly they realize that what's in the book, this thing called a mummy, or this thing called a pyramid actually exists in some real life. Oh, my other tip, by the way, and then don't laugh, is reading in the potty. So I know that's a terrible habit, and I have an author called Rujuta Devekar, who if she saw this video would be horrified. But the point is that, as a kid, that's what I did. It was my guilty pleasure. My whole family did that. We only read in the potty. And we have these potty books for Shoki, and he calls them poo poo books. You know, he has a little library that follows him everywhere. So he has books in the toilet, he has books in the playroom and he also has a whole bunch of books in the car. So wherever he is, there are books. That's another tip I would give you. Uh, and you know, don't worry about age ranges. I read as a kid, I often read books I didn't understand when I was 10 or 12. Like I think at 12 I was reading Jane Austen. I'm not sure I fully understood, you know, Jane Austen or the language. But something about reading that book gave me pleasure. One was pride that I was reading like a grown-up book and I felt very grown-up. Uh, but also there were bits in the story that appealed to me, you know. So this idea that you have to fully comprehend everything and everything has to be an age-related thing doesn't happen. It doesn't happen at 2, it doesn't happen at 4, it doesn't happen at 12. So these are my tips. Books everywhere. Uh, read in short bursts. Point to objects. Use the images. Uh, with older kids, you can even associate stuff with phones, uh, like Google image pictures. Uh, and lastly, my guilty advice, which is uh, potty books. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to push that one on you. Thank you.